Hey Steve, how are you? Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> It's going I was fantastic. just like sitting in and listening in on everything you guys were talking about. It's a, it's a kid's show now, so watch your fucking mouth. Well, I mean, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, all the women are plugging in their vibrators. Yes, they see Steve. Because you're really cute. Hey, girls. Hey, girls. Oh, look, stop, stop. Oh, do go on. Do go on. <laughs> now I have to ask you the question. Are you hung? Uh, it's uh, short and shriveled and always to the left, but it's there. <laughs> That's a new answer. Most guys say, "Yeah, I trip over it." You know. <laughs> so, anyway, like, ladies, look at it, this. Right party. now, it's like a stack of nickels. Right now, right, right, right. <laughs> but it's cold in England. It's cold in England. Oh, is it really? You know yeah, I mean? it's always it, cold in England. No, it's not. I was there in August. I was in London. Well, I was August, cold. yeah. August, it was hot, like here, like it was in New York. Hang on, we got to introduce him. We got to introduce him. Oh, okay. Him. Goodbye. Hey, everybody. <laughs> now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the super talented and the super cool Steve Cardenas, also known as Rocky DeSantis, the Red Ranger. Hello and welcome What's to the up? show. What's up? It's morphin' time. <laughs> there we go. I love it, dude. Like I have to say, and I have a lot of questions about that once we get going. But Okay, have- sure. Hey, first of all, are you Italian? Uh, no, I'm uh, Mexican. Oh, okay, because your last name sounded Latin, of course, Italian. Well, Latin. yeah, I mean, uh, well, I think, um, yeah, what? no, my, my character's, uh, well, my, my last name is Cardenas, um, but well, Car- uh, my Cardenas. character's name is DeSantos, which I think is also very Latin as well. Uh, DeSantos, I know DeSantos, and that's uh, Italian also. But, you yeah. know, it's, it's Latin. When you, speak, it's Latin yeah. when you speak Latin, all the names are the same. How did a little Mexican boy from California, I believe, get, <laughs> get to England and become a Rocky, whatever you are? Is he? <laughs> Well, actually, uh, I grew up. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, um, and then um, I auditioned for Power Rangers, and they moved me to California when I got the part. How old um, were you when you did that? But wait, yeah. wait, wait, you transmit from California or England? No, he's in England now. When do you? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm getting. I'm he very, doesn't know the Power listen, Rangers. I, I, I do. I'll, I'll That's 80, okay. That's okay. Power I'll, Rangers isn't on that anymore. I'll be eighty-two. He doesn't do the Power Rangers two, anymore. In two weeks, two, another month, I'll be eighty-two. So Holy brain, Moses! Well, the yeah. brain, the brain cells are going. So be, <laughs> he doesn't do the Power Rangers Wait. anymore. Now well, he lives in the UK. Why don't you do the Power? Because it's not on anymore. Well, anymore. Well, him. well, actually, well, yeah. Why? Yeah, no. Well, the the show still airs. Um, it's been this and uh and next year it'll be thirty years that it's been airing nonstop. Ooh. Um, and so the show started in nineteen ninety three. Um, but I was on the show from nineteen ninety four to ninety seven. Um, that's when I did my stint on the Power time. Rangers. Yeah. So it's been several years. Uh, it's been a couple of years, but, um, the thing is that oddly enough, like the fans, they're all grown up now, but they still love the show and they sure. still come out to comic cons and greet us and get autographs and things like that all the time. I mean, we're constantly touring and traveling, um, through comic cons and comic events. Yeah. But that's the Power <laughs> Rangers movie. Uh, that's, that's me right there. That's my action figure. <laughs> I collect action yeah. figures of everybody who's been on the show, and so I brought uh, this. I brought oh this my on god! So people look can at take that. A look. That's so awesome. <laughs> he just blew a fuse. I like love that <laughs> shit so much. Now wait yeah. a minute. What made you decide to live in England? Uh, well, this is where I'm, my, my my wife is from England, so I moved here to be with her. Oh, she didn't want to come to the states. Smart woman. Right? Yeah. No, she's she's a she's she's British, and um, you know she has uh, she's a uh, doctor. She's a research scientist here. And uh, so she has a, a big, important job here. And so she couldn't come to the States right now. But not to say that we might not move back to the States in the future. But for now, um, her contract and, uh, and her uh, job where, keeps where, her where, here for the I, moment. I know England well. Where do you live in England? I live in West London. Oh, not that, that's shabby. Yeah, it's, it's nice. <laughs> Not very shabby, West it's a, London. It's it's a, yeah, it's it's expensive too. You bet, you <laughs> um, but uh, you know, if you if you're used to living in Los Angeles or New York, that's just just as expensive there. So um, you know, I, well, actually, I lived in Stanford, LA for like 25 years, so I, you learn how to like you know. Uh, San Francisco was written up as the most expensive place to live. Yeah, San Francisco is incredibly yeah, expensive. The yeah. most expensive of all. But I love England. I go I go often. I have a good friend there, James Jessup who owns a wonderful uh, estate down in Lancashire. 
Okay. Um, and it, he's got a, his own castle, is on his own church, is on the estate with the castle. And, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And when you go into the church, there are coffins with these medieval warrior soldiers that are the original. It's a historical, beautiful town, Lancashire. Oh, wow. Sounds amazing. I, have, you ever been, yeah. have you ever been to Lancashire? I, I, I don't think I've been to Lancashire, but I have been all over England because, you know, they, I tour around film. these Comic Cons and all over. So I've been to like some very odd corners of England for sure. Well, so many films have been made in Lancashire because of its scenic beauty. It's a lovely, oh, sure. lo I love it there. And I love London. But, you know, London is getting a, uh, getting a little New york -y for me, you know, a little L.A. Yeah. It is a big it is big city um, for sure. But, well, no, you know, the crazy the crap drive an hour out of the way and it's like you know beautiful as can be no yeah. i don't i don't like what the shitty people that have gone to these cities have done to it some of the low-class common garbage that's moved to new york london and i mean even in in paris we live in palm springs we don't live in la we no, no, go to la wait, all I, the time. I, saw, I saw graffiti in paris i mean who right. in the, who the hell would write merde in french on the the monuments i mean i, I just can't yeah. stand it anymore why people want to do that i don't know some people in the world just can't stand to see nice things you know and that's the way it. it is but you know I, I i can't really speak to that but it just is what it seems like to me in the chat room first of all say hi to everybody in the chat room hey guys how are you guys thanks for uh, tuning in uh appreciate you guys coming out uh, Dave, I can't Dave see Hughes the actually, chat's coming up, but D, D, Dave Hughes says he DJs at the Blackpool, Blackpool Tower in Lancashire, and B Claudia says you were at the German Comic Con in Dortmund. Oh yeah, I did the German Comic Con uh, <laughs> uh, a few months back. Man, it was great. I, I liked it over there. We love that. We love that. So okay, so we have a great chat room. Uh, there we have really great like people who love the show, and um, so I want to like go. I want to talk a little Power Rangers stuff. First of all, I met okay. you originally. One of the very first comic cons I ever went to, um, when I was a when I was just starting out as a clothing designer, actually this is a long time ago, and okay. it was in Orlando. It was called MegaCon, and you were there yes. with Jason, you and Jason David Frank, and I'm sure everybody else were, but you were the two that I was like all excited about. Well, I was, I, th I think I know which one you're talking about, and this was several years ago. Right? Oh, this, this is like is, you're talking like yeah, it like must a, have been like 2009, maybe right. No, uh, way even before that, I think. Well, I, I, I didn't. I didn't start doing cons until about two thousand eight, two thousand eight. Uh, well, so it right had to be around then. Yeah. But okay. there was a show in there was a show in Florida that Jason, David, Frank, and I did. It was called FX Con at the time. Yes, and I've been to maybe that too. Okay, yes. now hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, boys. Do me a favor. Say you remember him so he won't pout all day. Oh, he doesn't have to remember you me. Say, <laughs> say, I, I, I remember you. I would no, love so, to say that uh, I remember you, but I no, 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 people listen, a listen, listen, <laughs> you know. Lie, lie, lie. Say, I remember, <laughs> I remember you. You were that. Oh, yeah. Outrageous. Oh, yes, Jimmy. Yes, of course. <laughs> that that of course. outrageous faggot. Yeah. <laughs> we're married, by the way, so uh, we could do that. Dressed to each like other? a moron. <laughs> yeah. Dressed like a moron. He used to dress like stupid. No, no. Oh, so you guys days. look. So this is one of my. I have thousands of action figures, literally in my in my uh, uh, in my uh, in my office. So you guys, this is from My Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, and this is his action figure. Yeah. And one of these days we'll meet him, and he's going to sign it because everything in my office is signed. But oh, absolutely. But, would you live in Would you live in California if you came back? If I came back, most likely would probably move back to California. Yeah. Why not Houston? Well, I mean, hey, Texas is great as well. I mean, I, like Houston, I said, I grew up in Texas. Beautiful, um, Houston. Yeah, beautiful. and it's it's it is great. Um, but I don't know. Um, I mean, I've lived several places, and California is pretty tough to beat. Um, if I'm going to move back, but I think I'm probably going to be here for a while. Well, if you move back to uh, Los Angeles, bring a tent and live in the street. Everybody else is. <laughs> So, okay, so I want to go to the Power Ranger stuff because everybody in the chat room is, like, asking questions, Of too. course, of course. Uh, fire away, fire okay, away. So how did you actually, like, get that gig? You said you auditioned. You lived in Texas and you auditioned for it. Were you, like, a karate person ahead of time? Yes, I was. Yeah, I've been doing martial arts since I was 12 years old. And um, I was a big fan of, like, anything martial arts on film. So I used to watch all the old kung fu theater shows. And I used to watch, like, you know... Um, 
just anything martial arts movies, John Clyde Van Damme, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I used I to watch John. all of that, you know, back in the day. Um, but I had no aspirations to be, you know, a, a martial artist on film or an actor or anything like that. Um, but I was, uh, I was a martial arts instructor. I was teaching kids at the time. Uh, my job was doing teaching kids. I used to do that after school when I was in high school. And then into my 20s, I started, I was teaching as well. Um, and uh, I had a friend who had a pizza shop. And I was listening to the radio in there. We were just hanging out one afternoon and uh, a commercial came on the radio. And this was in Dallas, Texas, by the way, when I was living in Dallas. And uh, they said, hey, uh, if you if you know anything about Power Rangers or if you're a martial artist or a gymnast, which I was both, um, they said, we're looking to um, hire some new Power Rangers. So if you want to come try out, come down to the local TV station in downtown Dallas and try out on this day from this time to this time. And my friend looked at me and was like, bro, <laughs> that seems like it's right up your alley. I go, hmm, yeah, maybe. Because I was familiar with the show because it had already been on for a little while. And I was a kid, as you know, I was teaching martial arts to kids. So kids were always joining up for because of Power Rangers and they were always talking about Power Rangers. So I was like, let me see what this show is about. What is it? And I started watching it and I was, you know, and I started getting into it. And then I was, as I was watching it, I would see all these guys doing their stuff. And I'm like, I could do that. I could do that. Never I dreaming that. that I'd ever get this part. But um, when this I, this commercial came on, I was like, is this for real? So I, I went and I called the local TV station, the local Fox station, and I said, are you guys holding auditions? And they said, yeah, it's down at this this area on this day. Come on down and, and try out. So I get there, and there's like 5,000 people in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And I just said to myself, oh, God, there's no effing way. There's no way I'm going to uh, to get this part, you know? So F I went and- F I, As in fucking? <laughs> as in no fucking way. <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, so I, I went, I, I, I stood, I went before him, and it was just like, it was like American Idol. You know what I mean? They had three, three little judges sitting at a table, and they were just herding people in one at a time. You get 30 seconds to show them what you know how to do. And uh, so I just put together a little martial arts kata like routine when I mix in a little gymnastics in it and stuff. And uh, I did my routine. They're like, okay, great. Thanks. Uh, don't call us. We'll call you type of thing. <laughs> and uh, so I, I didn't hear anything for a couple days, but then they called me back and they were like, hey, we really like your audition. Um, we want to fly you to California to meet the producers. So there's a plane ticket waiting for you at the airport. Just go go uh, go to the airport in the morning and uh, be prepared to uh, show your stuff. So I was like starting. Exciting, to, right? You were like crap, excited. This could be real. <laughs> this could be real. So uh, so I, I I went to the airport. I picked up my 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 plane ticket, waiting for me at at, at check in, and uh, I got on the plane, took a flight from Dallas to Burbank, landed at Burbank, and we went right to Savon Studios. Went right up into their executive boardroom, and they had to like basically move the big desk back so that we had space to do our audition. And uh, I just showed them what I knew how to do, and um, and then. You know, like the next day, they were just like, "Okay, congratulations, uh, you've got the part." And so, did they tell you you were going to be the Red Ranger? Then, no, right they the didn't bat? tell me. They didn't <laughs> tell me that right off the bat. They said, "You're going to be one of the new Rangers. Congratulations." Um, oh, and by the way, um, you can't go home because we have to start filming right away because we need a month and a half to put as many episodes in the can as possible to introduce your character. Because in a month and a half's time, we're going to Australia to do the feature film which is also going to be upcoming. I was like, what in the hell is going on with my life right now? <laughs> what great. just happened to me? It was all in the span of four days from the day I went to my audition to the day I got hired. And I, and like I said, I, they, I couldn't even go home. We had to start filming the next day. So they said, can you just have your clothes mailed? So I had to have my clothes shipped to me from Texas to California and uh, everything began. And then my whole life changed after that. It was in, that, just That's very crazy. exciting, but I have to tell you something. Mm -hmm. I was contacted by them. And they yeah. said they were firing you and replacing you with me. Oh, really? <laughs> I, yeah, that, that they thought I was the better choice and I would do a better job. And then my alarm clock went off and I woke up. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think they had that mentality of like uh, the Johnny Bravo, just anyone who fit the suit. They couldn't, they didn't care that much. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I, I, I've been cast in a few of those too. <laughs> No, yeah. I think it's like so much fun though. And that's funny that you said it that way. They have to get as many in the can because when you just came, when you came on, you said you were on it from 90, not, when were you on? 94 of, to 98? We years. started on the show in 94, yeah. And how many years was it? Seven. Um, no. 94, 95, and 96. And so I in did three my last years, 97, yeah. 
because like because you shot because I like on so you guys this is some of the so he was on the he was on 71 episodes of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and then we have Power Rangers Zio he did 50 episodes Power Rangers yeah. Turbo three episodes Power Ranger Ninja Steel one so that's 120 that's like 130 episodes in like yeah. three three years I mean that's yeah. like we did a lot of filming we, we never had any <laughs> we never had any hiatuses or anything like that we we filmed nonstop. Yeah, but never uh, bitch about it because it was a paycheck after every show. Well, I mean, exactly. I mean, you know, at that I mean, point, I like, what are you going to do? You know, yeah. yeah. I, I never bitch about working. Never. Happy to be working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, happy, so, happy, uh, happy. Yeah. And part of like such an iconic thing because there isn't a kid on the planet who doesn't know who the Power Rangers yeah. are. And I, anybody would have taken that job. There's no question about it. So I actually, um, I, uh, I haven't talked to her lately, but I was pretty good friends with Serena Vincent, who was in two of the Power oh, I, Rangers yeah. movies. I know when, Serena Vincent the, very well. She's mm-hmm. the Yellow Ranger, and then yeah, she a, was the Yellow Ranger on the on the TV series um, of the Lost Galaxy series. Of and Power I Rangers. originally met her at a con, but we became really good friends. As a matter of fact, she's been on the show a couple of times. And, yeah. and then you guys, some of the movies, then the movies that he's been in, because there's so many things, I can't even believe all these things. So he's got Tur. Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. That was the second one that we did. He's got Power Rangers Zio, Zio Quest, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Ninja Quest, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Alpha's Magical Christmas. So there's like, <laughs> yeah. there's like, between we did that a lot that... of specials and we did, we did, uh, you know, but we did do um, a couple of big feature films, which was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie and then uh, Turbo, a Power Ranger movie. We did both, uh, and they're both, both of those were both, um, let, you know, let Jimmy released finish. by 20th Century Fox. Let Jimmy finish doing your credits, otherwise, ah. he, no, he, he drops a heart on if he does. No. <laughs> No, I just think it's. I just think. I mean, I was too old for the Power Ranger when the power. I'm old, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just liked it because. Uh, no, that's that's well. I mean, that, that's a, every Power Rangers thing. That's all the major Power Rangers movies that he's in. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I think you would you I'd probably list every single episode on there. So I, that would probably take a while to, <laughs> to no, list all of those out. Now, listen on the personal side. Everybody out there wants to know. How did you meet a scientist being an actor? What the hell have you got in common with a scientist? I well, it's it's odd, like the way life kind of brings you little surprises, I guess. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I you know, I was I got married really young. I was married really young, um, and um, the woman was a bit a little bit older than me, um, but it was not a good it was not a good marriage. It was really volatile, and we had a kid together, which is why we got married, and that was the, probably the worst reason to get married. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh wow, there's a, a dog in there. <laughs> That's Astro. He's our oh, power. Hey, Astro. He's our superhero up, dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his tail in the air and everything. That's great. Um, yeah. Uh, so I had had a bad marriage, and then that basically, you know, kind of like turned me off to the idea of ever getting married again. So I always told myself, you know, I will only, you know, be with somebody again if they are willing to not try to ever want to get married, you know, or, or have any more or have any children. Um, cause I didn't want to have any more kids either. So, um, it, it took a very long time to find someone that was okay with all that. Plus, you know, whatever, all the other, you know, faults Things that, that, that people it. have. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I was, you know, um, whatever I was, you know, kind of happy to just be single. Um, but I, I randomly knew I was going to England and, Um, for an event one, a a few years back. And um, I was looking on Instagram and I saw somebody had liked one of my pictures or I had liked one of their pictures or whatever. And um, so I saw this girl on Instagram and I was just like, wow, she's kind of (laughs) cute. Let me see see what her story is. So I kind of like sort of stalked her a little bit on Instagram. And then I just, you know, simply said hello to her. And then she answered me back and said, hello. And then uh, I let her know that I was going to be doing an event in England in a couple of months. And could we keep chatting with each other until I went to England and maybe we could meet up and just have some coffee or something like that, see how it goes. And um, we, we ended up just hitting it off. And then, you know, we ended up talking uh, every single day. Um, And then when we finally did meet, um, I really just had a pretty good idea that this person was going to be right for me. And, um, you know, and now it's been over three years or so that we've been together. Um, and before COVID hit, we used to see each other once a month. We would, we, you know, we did the long distance relationship, but we would, you know, 
I would go to England for 10 days or she would come to the States for 10 days and we would, you know, really get quality time with each other. Um, and then when COVID hit, we didn't see each other for like seven months and oh, it was fun. really difficult. Yeah. And so I finally just said, I mean, what am I doing here? You know, I, I can live anywhere because I can do this work that I do with the conventions and acting and everything. I can do it anywhere. So I, I just said, screw it. So I just moved here, you know, um, and uh, now, now we're, uh, we're fully together. So <laughs> Congratulations. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. do you think you change your mind and possibly get married? No, we'll never get married, but I still call her my wife though, because, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's what we are, you know, but we'll never do the certificates or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, I think just in the, in the terms of like, what it takes for people to unentangle themselves if it doesn't work out is always very um, difficult and always leaves people with a bad taste in their mouth after. And, you know, I've dated other people. And when, you know, when we finally do break it off, I, I have nothing but friends. All my people, all my exes are all still friends with me um, because, you know, we just, you know, I, I never, you know, want those kind of entanglements, if you understand what I mean. Absolutely. Well, we get married yeah. in hopes that we don't have to have those bitter ends. But yeah, like, you know, I mean, but everybody hopes that, but sixty percent of people get divorced. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know I, what I mean. I, I mean, I, what what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, if, if you love somebody, why do you got to prove it to the state? It's you not know? a matter of proving it. I married Jimmy. See, Ron's Ron got to remember Ron's eighty two, so he's from a different generation. Yeah, fair, I, fair, I, fair. I I want the, the feeling of the paper gives me an ownership of his. <laughs> No, no, it gives me an ownership of his heart. Me, no, I, right, own, I own his heart legally. And if he ever left me for somebody else, I'll take him to the fucking cleaners and you'll never know where he is. Exactly. I will that, I will well, you just out. made my case for me, my man. You just made I my will case wipe for him me. him out. And when he's living in LA in a tent, I will pass by and piss on him. Uh, <laughs> see, the that's the type of vindictiveness that I just don't <laughs> want to, you know, I, you know, I I'm only to bring I'm myself joking. into. <laughs> no, I'm, I have a creative mind, but I never do things uh, like that. Oh, I, would sure, never yeah. do that. I, I, I didn't really think that you meant what you were saying but you know no, no, but not, it, but not, it does prove my point because there are vindictive people out there well no, no i was, I was no. married for 16 years yeah. and my wife and i had a very very uh, good divorce she left me the children and we never saw her again so what better than that hey, can you have? pretty good I raised, deal <laughs> i raised my daughters i raised both my daughters myself yeah. they're women they're women now and she never bothered us or came back in our lives it was nice <laughs> they, they, they want to know in the chat room if you're related to Clayton Cardenas from the Mayans. Do you have any siblings uh, that are in entertainment? No, I, I am not related to 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 him, but uh, that's a great last name that he's got. It's, it you sure know, is. I mean, in, in, you but know, south, we'll south the of the border, is, that, that, that last name is fairly common, but it's not that common here in the States, you know? Right. Um, so, so what, what are the Mayans for the those TV who, show? The, the Mayans is a spinoff of the uh, Sons, Sons of Anarchy, Anarchy. TV show. Yeah, okay. we've had a bunch of people from that on. Yeah, the, show. the Mayans were the uh, were the Latin motorcycle gang, and now they've got their own TV show. Right, right. We actually right. met a bunch of people from that. Yeah, no, I know. Now, now I remember. You know, it just gives me a while to remember. So, what does your uh, what does your son think about the fact that you're like an action star? Like, does, does, very does proud. He, what he, do you think? <laughs> does he have your action figure? Oh, actually, I, I have a daughter, and she's oh, already daughter. Okay, and sorry. She, and she's already twenty three now. So no, she couldn't. So it's not a big I don't deal. Think she cares less. She couldn't care less. <laughs> Did she, did she That's just... not true. I have a daughter who's fifty four and one forty six, and they are so proud of their dad. Oh well, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm sure and that there's proud, that element, believe, but I mean, she's not. She's not the. She's not the one who watches the Power Rangers at all. No, <laughs> but she, with the action she's figures. proud that her daddy is not like a farmer or. A I plumber. was. I would hope so. You know? So yeah. real quick for everybody, what we're gonna do, Roxy. Um, do you you have the Turbo a Power Rangers movie trailer? We're gonna play it for everybody real quick. Um, yeah, I want to see it. Um, so we can have it play. Don't go anywhere, Steve. And we're going to talk more because sure, I have lots more sure. to talk about. But I just thought for everybody uh, who doesn't, I don't know who doesn't know who the Power Rangers are. I didn't but... know because I'm 150. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still from now Voyager with Betty Davis. So you, you introduced the trailer, Steve. That way we can have it in your voice. Okay. And up right now on the Jimmy Star Show, we are going to see wait, the wait, trailer. Hold up, stop. Sorry, hold. with Ron wait. Russell. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we are going to see, <laughs> sorry, with the afterthought, Ron Russell, we are going to see the trailer for Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Check it there out. There we go. 
it's time to power up. The world's most famous action force is back on the big screen. With a secret weapon. I'm the new Blue Ranger. What are you talking about? A giant problem. <laughs> and a whole new way. Wind chaser ready to howl. This is awesome. To thrill. Let's rip the blossom. All right. Whoa. Turbo action. Good thing you don't need a license to drive Zord. Turbo power. Turbo sword. Megazord morph sequence is online. Let's shift to the turbo. That's my man. for the ultimate yeah. power trip. What a rush! Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. <laughs> I. <laughs> it's funny that you showed that trailer because that was the movie that I was only in for about 10 minutes of the movie because this is the story that movie was the story of how my character got written out and replaced. <laughs> oh, I picked like, the wrong one then. I just yeah, that's I, okay. I, I want, I want it's, no, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, so that's why you didn't even see me in there at all. <laughs> why is it frozen on on my monitor and not yours? I don't know, Roxy. How come we're frozen? My, my monitor. We're not frozen on here. We're just frozen here. My monitor is frozen. Jimmy says. Oh, we're, it says unmute. What the fuck? I don't even know what's going. on. Well, now now he Jimmy's muted. I don't know if that means we're all muted or not. I don't know if anybody can hear me or see me. Yeah, I have. <laughs> okay. Roxy is on the Yeah, screen. hey. Hi. What's going on? <laughs> it's well, we dropped them. They're going to be right back very We're soon. We're having like a, they some had... technical difficulties. Am I still live? You're live. We're live. Okay. Yeah. Well, Hi. Just... <laughs> I guess it's uh, now become the Steve Cardina show. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All I, right, if we'll... I could see the chats, then I would be able to answer some questions, but I I can't see anything. So um, we've got whoa, what a rush! Keep talking, Steve. Okay, all right, I will keep yeah. talking. If anybody has any questions they want to ask, there by come, all means, please here feel free. Here comes Jimmy and Ron right now. Hey, there we are. And like we get to you, and then you dis and then we disappeared. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I just explained to our viewers. That's okay. I, I took over the whole show. You know yeah, what I mean? You it's now called the Steve Cardina show. It's now called the Steve Cardina show. Everybody has to keep in mind that England is 9,000 miles from Palm Springs. So there's a bit of difficulty sometimes with that. Just, <laughs> oh, look, they said Roxy oh, right. sounds sexy. Roxy, Roxy is sexy. She's available, too. Anybody out there want a bride? Okay, so here's what I want to know. First of all, so did you... Uh, Actually, the first question I want to know is, did you see the new Power Rangers movie, the one that came out like two or three years ago? In 2017, ago? yeah. I, I, I saw it, yeah. Okay, what did you think, being, being like the star of the Power Rangers movies, what did you think of that one? Well, I thought it was just okay, you know, um, because I feel like, you know, the Power Rangers, the, you know, the, the, the theme of Power Rangers is that these teenagers with attitude get recruited to, to take on you know, the aliens of the universe that seem to be, you know, bent on destroying humanity in a sense. Right. Right. Um, but, you know, you the, this this newer movie was sort of like, you know, the breakfast club. All these kids get get thrown into detention and that's how they meet. You know, so they're already kids that are a little bit bad as it is. And I think so. It's supposed to be teenagers with attitude, not teenagers with angst. Um, so I, <laughs> I no, feel I like that was a part too. of it. And the other thing, too, is Power Rangers is all about action. And this movie was very slow. It didn't, it took a long time to get to the action. Um, it took a long time for them to come together as a team. I feel like they could have made all of that happen a bit sooner in the movie because then you get to the action where there was only about 10 minutes of action at the end of the movie. And the rest of it was them struggling between themselves, you know, which uh, is OK. But I mean, it, it keeps on the message that everybody needs to learn how to come together despite their differences, which is also a big theme of Power Rangers as well. And in that sense, I guess they did OK with it. Um, cinematically it looked pretty good but the visual effects um the zords i didn't like the way the the zords looked the, the robots that we manned um and 
I, I agree. Like suits that I, much. I, so I uh, there was a few things they missed the mark on. And the big thing they missed the mark on was the cameos. They should have had everyone who had ever been in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers old movie and in the TV show, they should have had cameo parts in there. Even if it was parts where... You know, we were just like maybe the grocery clerk or the store manager or, you know, somebody that worked no, the at the parents, you know, though. You guys could right. have been the parents. Our parents or anything. They they had they missed major opportunities and the fans were very upset by that. And it That's showed right. and it the did box well. Office. And it you didn't know what? do this well. Is, this is the new Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, years ago, Hollywood wrote stories to take mm -hmm. you to fantasy. Today, mm -hmm. they have messages and bring us to reality. We don't need to have reality because we have CNN. And all yeah. that reality. So right. I agree with I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like they I feel like they just missed a few opportunities there. And now that Hasbro has bought the franchise, I think they're planning on remaking the origin story again and taking it further from there with a, with with a saga, so to speak. But um, I hope they do it right. I hope they listen to the fans and do it right. Who knows if they will? I like the actors that they that they used. I thought the actors were pretty yeah, good, but I, I mean, but I agree that the act the the action wasn't all that good. It took way too long for them to all come right. together, mm -hmm. and and uh, and it it didn't really. And also the fact that they were all kind of like troubled kids, you know, really, which it was it ended up being cool because they came together and everything, but. It, but it, it felt like it missed the mark on that too, because the Power Rangers is all about like right. good, and, good and evil, yeah. and you I guys mean, are like taking like care the, of the these evil. Power Rangers. You know, I mean, the, you know, when they when they say the teenagers with attitude, it's really more. You know, these the Power Rangers were good kids. You know what I mean? Right. They were already good kids. You know what I mean? And then that's what made them worthy of being able to to be a Power to, Ranger to, to, to be the, to don the suit in the first place. And these guys were just a bunch of troublemakers in my sense. You know, in, in my mind, um, the only person who was actually really brilliant in that movie was um, was uh, um, RJ um, RJ Seiler, who was um, the Blue Ranger. Um, and he, uh, his actual character was, in my opinion, stole the entire movie. Um, he was actually really good. Um, and I know that it was kind of interesting because his character was also like, um, had Asperger's or autism or whatever. He was a little bit autistic. Um, so that's what made him such a brilliant brain oh, yeah. type character, great, but, though. but his character, in my opinion, and his acting was phenomenal. So I, I liked him the best out of all of that. One of the girls, I don't, and I don't know her name, but we saw her the other night in a new Netflix series. She was the oh, um, in a new Netflix series with um, Michelle Dockery and uh, wonderful series. And Sienna Miller, and she was Loved like it. she was in it, and she's like really blown up. You know, since be, mm -hmm. doing that film, she's like totally like blowing up. Yeah. Since, since you brought up the M Michelle uh, series. I suggest everyone watch it. She plays the name of it. She Anatomy of a Scandal. It's called. And she plays oh, Anatomy of a Scandal. Okay. She plays a barrister in England who is defending. Well, watch it. It's twisty and wonderful. And Michelle Doherty, she's she's my favorite That's actress favorite in actress. the world. I love and adore her. Her acting is beyond brilliant. Do you know who Michelle Dockery is? She's from Downton Abbey. She's like she's yeah. beyond, be, beyond brilliant. You should work with yeah. her. Have you one met day. her? Have you ever met her? <laughs> I have no. not. I have not. Get to um, work not, with not to my recollection. I get to work with her. She is wonderful. So besides the Power Rangers too, I noticed lately you're doing some other stuff on your IMDb. You had a movie called Beast of the Water and another one called The Order. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Beast of the Water um, was sort of like uh, this little um, uh, independent um, film that we did, um, and we filmed it in outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and it was written by, um, I don't know if you guys ever saw the, 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 the makeup show face off. Yes. Did you guys ever watch that series? Yes. We have so a friend of, who, who was on it. Yeah. One of the, uh, um, one of the, uh, winners of face off in one of the seasons, he was the uh, director and he wrote this movie and he actually created the creature for this movie. So the, the movie is sort of like predator. Um, you know, you've got, uh, these, you know, um, corporate mercenaries that are kind of like being hired to um, accompany this doc, this research doctor to try to find some kind of ancient artifact in the native American, you know, off some native American reservation or whatever. And little did we know that this land is protected by some creature um, that basically takes on the form of water, but then turns into like an actual physical beast um, and, uh, the guy that they had inside that suit was seven foot seven, 
um and then when he put and when you put the whole suit on the thing he was over nine feet tall and so it was that wow. no 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 um no um digital effects it was all practical effects it was all creature we do uh, a lot of that effects. too and it We're... was uh it was incredible man um and i enjoyed doing that movie because i got to be somebody that was a completely different character than whoever rocky was this guy smoked cigarettes and carried a machine gun and cussed like a sailor and you know <laughs> and just was all in all in general an asshole you know and which i, I think is cool though. like that yeah it's I, fun I, to I play mean, that i, kind I of think character. it's i mean i think that you know for so many years you've you've been everybody knows you as like rocky mm -hmm. but you're an actor and you can do any i mean right. anything now so it gives you more opportunities to do i am like if you were, would you like to be an action star? I I, I don't want to be a star at all. Well, I mean, an action uh, actor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I would do I would do that kind of stuff. But you know, for me, it's like I'm more a little bit about like bit parts. You know, um, I don't want to be like super famous or anything like that. It's cool. Just I like to do little bit parts here and there. Um, and I like to do that to give back to the fans that I have now that want to see me in other things. Because ultimately, for me, it's all about going and doing these events that I do the Comic Cons, I travel the world doing them. And for the for for to be able to give back to these fans that have stayed so loyal for the years, I like to try to do little things, you know, that, that you know, they wouldn't normally see me in, you know, so I don't, um, I don't have aspirations in any way to be like, you know, one of those actors that's out there doing films constantly and stuff like that. I would be much happier just doing little bit parts just for fun, you know, um, and that's so sort wait of a minute. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be happy getting $20 million for I'm not, I'm nobody's saying that. I'm not saying that, <laughs> but you know, nobody's going to be off. No, no producers are offering those kind of roles to me. You know, you never I mean? know. So, you never know. I fair. knew. It. Listen, you, I knew. You do I never knew. know. But hang on, I've been in the game on. for a long time and hasn't Listen, happened yet. We're quiet, quiet. <laughs> I'm I sorry. knew. I knew Angelina Jolie when she was Angie Voigt. She's my daughter's friend. Mm -hmm, they grew mm -hmm. up together in school. And I asked Angie when she was about seven, "You want to be an actress?" And she went. I don't know. And look at it today. So my friend, you don't know. Tomorrow well, there's a, part... a difference between seven and forty seven. And... No, but wait a minute. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow you look great. Wait though. a minute. Tomorrow, tomorrow a part may come your way. That'll make you an overnight sensation. That's the crazy part of our wonderful business. I, you're absolutely right. And so here, think and positive. The, think positive yeah, no, always. Here's the thing. I am thinking positive. And and the thing is, it's like, you know, if something were like to happen like that that sort of fell into my lap of course i'm going to take it but what i'm not doing is i'm not out in the grind every day auditioning for you know you know for you know three auditions a day kind of stuff that that's not me i don't do that um, how, well, you know, how many comic cons do you actually do like could you do uh, well before covid hit i used to do them almost every single weekend i mean we were getting booked you know literally i would do 40 40 conventions a year Wow, a lot yeah. of so I mean, we have a lot of picture taking and signing. No, yeah. we have a mm -hmm. we have a friend, Felissa Rose, who's a big horror icon, and wait, 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 and wait, she wait, goes almost me. every weekend. Horror, horror, not horror. Horror, horror. 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 How do you say horror? Horror, horror. Another see? one that says horror. <laughs> you know, everybody thought she was a whore. Horror. She's not a whore. It's horror. Horror. <laughs> horror. Not whore. Actually, I'm yeah. going to put you because I produce a lot of films. Uh, I have like nine films that I'm working on right now. And Fantastic. so I have a, but I have a list of people. They always come to me because they know I have a lot of celebrities on the show saying, you know, who do you have? And I have this list with all the people. So I'll put you on the list. And that way, if anybody's interested, I'll hook you up. Um, well, to get you in. That's very there you go. You. I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. I listen. Like I said, I'm I'm open minded to things happening to me, you know. But I I'm also at the same time not, you know the one that's going to be like, I have a lot of th other things that I like to try to do. And I, um, and the, you know, the audition process is very time consuming and yes. just something that I'm not interested in. Well, now we do it online. You don't even have to be there. You just, <laughs> you just send in all your clips. You should, you should be my agent, man. This guy no, 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 is it's true. pushing no, no, me. No, no. <laughs> listen, no, listen, Stevie, Stevie. Yes, sir. I'm in, I'm in the business. How many, uh, 64 years. I started at 19. Mm -hmm. I'm still working. I've got six movies to do this year. Wow. And I have an audition for one. You know what my auditions were? Films that I were in. Yeah. So the more work you do, the more work you get. Because when they want an old bag right. that can still talk and walk, they call me. Absolutely. So, <laughs> it's still talk and walk. No, it's true. So the more <laughs> your films, your films are your uh, 
auditions. Well, well, that's, so well, that's what I hope for. You know what I mean? Wait a minute, wait a minute. A little bit of advice. Don't always do Power Rangers. Play other parts so people could see your ability as an actor. And I'm right. sure you'll get work without auditioning like I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that is that is what I try to do, you know. Yeah. And work I encourage the producers to, to 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 say and again, which is why I don't try to push for big parts and stuff. I'd be like, look, just put me some put me in some little roles. So I have something to give back to the fans when I go and when I go and, and see also them. Those and little... at the same time, my social media, I'll be able to help promote your movie because I'm going to be reaching out to a whole audience of people that, you know, listen to what I have to say and that I'm going to be, you know, they'll want to come see the movie. So, you know, putting me in the part also to just let people know I'm doing a movie and promote it. It helps promote their, their movie uh, and so on and so forth. And you have a very loyal fan base. You specifically. The Power Rangers have a very loyal fan base for sure. And when, I mean, I'm so humbled and grateful for that. You just can't even believe it. So almost 30 years later and these guys still come out and see us, man. I just, you know, I can't fathom it. They think that you should be on the Mayans. We have a friend, Augie Duke, who just got <laughs> cast on a couple episodes of that. They think oh, you should go on that. On Mayans? Yeah. Oh, we wow. I have to watch that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. No, I mean, look, I mean, like I said, I, I, you know, I would love to do more stuff, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't want to do like big starring roles that takes up a lot of commitment. You know, I'd rather do, you know, you know, where I in can and out, a, a, in and out, be on the set for a few days, have a little fun and, and then go on to the next thing. You know, do you like horror movies? I would do horror movies, but I'm not a huge horror movie fan. I hate so. them, and I'm in them all the time. And I hate them. <laughs> I think hey, just, that's okay. I, I, I would think they, totally. I think they are so stupid, and so you know, you know what's going to happen. They're all the same. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I try to avoid them. But let me get one point out. I was in a cameo role for a friend of mine. I played a doctor. And guess what? Somebody called up and said, we want you to play a scientist. Normally, I play a Brooklyn Mafia killer gangster. No, I'm, always, right. I'm always typed as the white, the killer, Italian killer. So now that little cameo got me a part as playing a scientist. I mean, that's a no one that's for fantastic. me. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. No, so you great. never know. You you're never ve- know. You're, you're very right, Ron. You're absolutely right. I, I, I hope you didn't think that I was dismissing everything that you were saying. No, 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 no. I, I was, was hoping- not. No, yeah. I was trying to help yeah, you out by saying, I appreciate that. No, you know, we you. have a very good friend of ours who um, is a famous actor, and he moved to Pennsylvania and he bought a farm, and he couldn't get any work. So now he said, I'm screwing it. I sold the farm and moved back to L.A. The minute yeah. he moved back to L.A., work fell his way. Out of yeah. sight, out of mind. That was a long yeah. time ago, though. Now things are a little and bit who different. who was it? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, the good thing You know who Paul Servino is? You know who Paul Servino is? Paul Servino, of course, yeah. yeah that, that's that's who it was. Yeah, Paul, that, Paul Servino yeah. bought that farm and then went back to Hollywood. Wait, wait, wait. Before you answer, too, say hi to Dawn. Say hi, hi Dawn. Dawn. How are you? She said you'd be really hot on the Mayans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! We have, we have, we have, Dawn. We, right now. We have very horny women coming. <laughs> on, <don't you? laughs> well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. No, so there's a short. There's a shortage of that in this world. So wherever you, wherever it is, it's welcomed. <laughs> let's do a hypothetical. Okay. Uh, so let's say, uh, so you're an actor. Let's say you could uh, work with any male and female actor on the planet. Uh, uh, even if it was just a cameo, what male and female actor you would be think, oh, my God, it'd be so much fun to work with them. And then the second part of the question is, if you could have ever been in any movie that's ever, you know, been made in history, what movie do you think you would have loved to have been in? OK. Um, all right. Um, I can answer all of those things. Um, so one of the actors that I would love to even just meet um, is Gary Oldman. I think he's probably one of the absolutely most, most diverse and most incredible actors that's on the screen these days. I agree. Um, and um, he, you know, from from True Romance to Commissioner Gordon, you know, I mean, this guy just does so much. To, Harry Potter, to Winston, Chir- Winston Churchill. Churchill, he was great. Yeah, I mean, Churchill. he was brilliant, amazing in that. Brilliant, He's so brilliant. Now, brilliant. I would brilliant. love to meet. Love to meet, and maybe someday work with Gary Oldman. He's amazing. Um, and the, the uh, an actress that I really admire too is uh, Tony Collette. I don't know oh, if you guys know who her. Tony Collette is, the Absolutely. United States of Terra. She yes. is genius. She's an Australian, I believe, but um, she, I mean, her, Wasn't I don't know. Wasn't she the mom in her, Little Miss Sunshine? Yep. She was, I think. Yeah, and she's she got a whole also, bunch of big movies. She was also the mom in The Sixth Sense. And yeah, she was, she's you know, phenomenal. She was Muriel's wedding back in, you know, yeah. back in the, in the 90s. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, she's just done some 
you know, the, the, the United States of Terror, all those split personalities she did on that Showtime series. I mean, I just think she's amazing. So I would love to, you know, meet and work Nobody's with her. Nobody's ever That'd picked her. Nobody's ever said her either. She's a good pick. I like she, that. She's an amazing pick. Like, I mean, if you don't know who this woman is, go watch her movies. She's right. so good. Like, so subtle. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I find that interesting. There's... She was in Krampus. Uh, for my birthday, Ron got me an eight-foot Krampus. I collect that. You know, I have these, all these <laughs> life-size things. And she was the mom in Krampus, too. Which is a big so, horror movie. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know that one. <laughs> so so um, many so many yeah. actors, so many actors don't have the PR or the money for the PR that other actors have. And they become sleeper actors, you know, who are great mm -hmm. actors but never famous. Um yeah. it's all about PR. And I yeah. agree with you. I've seen her work and she's a damn good actress. So what I about a movie? What you. about a movie you would like to have been so, in? So a movie that I would have liked to have been in was Oliver Stone's The Doors because oh, a The Doors are one of my favorite bands of all time. I know every song. I know all the lyrics. I know pretty much everything there is to know about Jim Morrison. I used to live on Sunset and Clark right across the street from the Whiskey. My my apartment building was right next door to the Whiskey A Go Go, and I just like lived and breathed the Doors. And you know, I thought Val Kilmer did such a great job as as Jim Morrison in that movie, and. Um, you know, that would have been a cool one to be a part of. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I actually went to see Jim Morrison's grave when we were in France. I did that too. I mean, I've been to Paris <laughs> a few times and I went to see Jim Morrison's grave because why not? I know. I think that's a yeah. cool answer. But weren't you guys too young when that when the doors were out? Well, yeah, the doors was after my time, but I was always a big fan of all the classic. I mean, you had to be, you I mean, had to the be Beatles, teenage. the Who, the Doors, the Rolling Stones, all that stuff. I you mean, had to be teenage. I was born in 1974 when half of this stuff wasn't even it was already like long gone, you know? Right, um, right, right. But I lived yeah. that I lived that era. Oh, for sure. I was yeah. right there, baby, as a hippie. I um, love Do you that. like Pink Floyd? One of my clients is Pink Scott Floyd. Pink. Love Pink Floyd. Um, I think, yeah, again, um, so many great albums, you know, Adam Hart, Mother, A Momentary Lapse of Reason, such great albums. And I just love their psychedelic, you know, song sound. You know what I mean? I'm a, um, I'm a publicist is how I support myself all the time when mm -hmm. I'm not producing films. And so Scott Page is the, the saxophonist for Pink Floyd and he's one of my yeah. clients. And he's a, oh, wow. friend of, he's a good uh, friend of ours, yeah, a good buddy. Phenomenal. Fantastic, you know, man. Yeah, no, I love Pink Floyd. Again, another one of my faves for sure. Do you know Sean Kanan? Because he does some of the conventions. He's from Cobra. Yeah, Kid. he was the Cobra Kai kid from Karate Kid. I Karate met kid. I'm from the from the Karate Kid three. I met him. Um, actually, I did a Comic Con in Liverpool um, a few months back. Yeah, and I know there, he was and there. And we met each other for the first time at that one. At that. Oh, show. okay. He's a very yeah. good friend of ours. He came oh, to cool. our house for Thanksgiving. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, tell him I said hello, and um, you know, I I know that I spoke in great length with his wife. Um, Michelle, I love Michelle. Yeah, Ron, right. Ron, Ron, Ron wrote, you, Ron need to, wrote, you need to tell them to call me because I know she has my my number, and I've actually reached out a couple of times to try to. Well, call Michelle, her. Michelle, we see her all the time. Michelle is directing. Yeah. Michelle is directing a movie. I'm in, and Sean Kanan plays my son. So we will see them very soon, and we will definitely tell them. I'll tell okay. Them. I yes. I love, yeah. I love yeah. Michelle. Tell, I love. Tell them that we, you know, we spoke in Liverpool, and I had reached out a couple of times, but haven't heard back from her. And I would like to talk to her. If you can do that for me, I'd appreciate that. I would absolutely, Certainly will. absolutely can do it. I can even introduce you. You have an email. I can introduce you in an email. Otherwise, if you don't, have um, it. I believe I, I believe I have it. Yeah. Um, oh, I can put you in a group yeah, next to her too. But yeah. yeah, we'll tell her. Okay, because she'll love it. Because he's, he's probably. Well, nobody knows for sure or not, but the rumor oh, is... Oh, you're not supposed to talk. I said the rumor is he's going to be on Cobra Kai the next season, so... Well, I would imagine saying. he would be. I mean, why, why? I mean, like, why they would be crazy not to put him in there. I know the fun. truth. I know the truth, but I'm not telling. There you go. <laughs> so do I. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. I like, love it. Um, Isn't it sad how we're not allowed to talk about the business? I'm going to work now in Nevada soon, in a couple of weeks, in a movie... And I'm not allowed to mention the title, talk about the movie, or who's in it. Yeah. Isn't I mean, that ridiculous? I, I, what yeah, happened to I mean, it seems a little crazy. I mean, I, I get certain things people want to protect what they're trying to make nonsense. without giving any spoilers, but you can't just at least say anything what it's about or at least nothing. The name of it. Not, nothing. I was yeah. told nothing. And you know, years ago we had pre publicity. We would talk about a film six months before its release, mm -hmm. and people yeah. would be anticipating it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, a Joan Crawford movie. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you know, then when it comes out, they wonder why it doesn't make money. Well, because nobody knew about it. Uh, we also yeah. want to we want to welcome. So Courtney Gale has joined us. She's a celebrity photographer that goes to all the events with us. Hey, Court. Um, she's fabulous. And Jason Taylor has a podcast. He said, hello, everyone. Steve Cardenas is awesome. 
Hey guys, and, uh, thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> you really, I really do think it's so, so, um, cause we only have a couple minutes left. How, 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 how I guess it's been great. Cause you've got a whole career of it, but like, how was it for you being part of one of the most iconic kids shows? Probably like in, well, in my history of my, my lifetime. Um, yeah. Well, um, I mean, you're, you're asking a good question because the thing is, it's like our fans back then, we're all little kids, you know, though. And back then there was also no social media. There was no way for them to contact us unless they wrote us these little snail mail letters, you know? Um, and we were lucky if we could answer them back because we were being herded around back and forth, working 12 hour days and then going and doing touring and, you know, all this stuff. Um, we had no time for ourselves, let alone time to any, interact with any of the fans, you know? Um, but now with the advent of comic cons, you know, on a massive scale and social media and the fans are actually older now and they can convey how much they appreciated our show. Um, I've sort of like, I've developed a whole new respect and, and, and I've really learned to embrace Power Rangers because after Power Rangers is over, I was kind of like done with that show, you know, and, uh, you know, I just went back to being opening up martial arts studios and running all that kind of stuff. And that's what I did for a lot of years until the convention scene started calling. Um, and then it just consumed all my time. Uh, and I just never really knew or appreciated like the fan base that we had and how loyal they've been um, until I started doing these events and seeing these guys come out and tell me the stories they tell me and, you know, how much we were, you know, so much a part of their childhood and to hear those kind of things like that. I mean, obviously it's very humbling to me. Um, and at the same time, just, you know, it's hard to fathom, you know, because I mean, I was a fan of like GI Joe and He-Man and all this stuff when I was growing up, but I'm not standing in line to get so-and-so signature you know what i mean like uh i you know i i just can't i don't understand but i appreciate um you know the fans and how loyal they've stayed to our show and um you know I'm forever going to be grateful and forever grateful to be like, part of pop it. culture you know what i mean i like love it so you guys can follow steve on instagram he's at steve cardenas pr s-t-e-v-e-c-a-r-d-e-n-a-s-p-r why is there a pr on the end of it power ranger Oh, pal, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm I know. a freaking moron. No, I know. I know what you're thinking because I know you're a publicist, so you're thinking public yeah, relations. And it's funny, it's my it's sister, true. my sister is a publicist. She does what you do as well, too. She's got a lot of big clients, Danica Patrick, Donovan McNabb, you know, Terrell Owens, all these people, right? And her her handle is Kathy Cardenas PR, <laughs> the same, but for public relations and mine is for Power Rangers. So we always joke about that all the time. I'm like a moron. I can't even believe that I didn't even get that. Like, that's just hilarious. So we want to thank yeah. you for coming on the show. Thank we you wish guys. you the best. I'll definitely contact Sean and Michelle and put you on our list. And yeah, hopefully, I will too. We'll, yeah, hopefully please, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll get to see you soon. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, we Steve, had a blast. It was all right. Fun. It thank was you fun. guys. Appreciate it. Thank you guys, everybody watching and listening you, and comments and all that. Appreciate you. Love you guys. Okay, you were a good guest. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye now. All right, everybody. So that was Steve Cardenas. I, I just get such a kick out of that. B's writing and keeps writing in the chat room how happy I am. I'm like grinning from ear to ear uh, just because, like, I love that. Anybody who I have action figures of, I, like, love. And the fact that I had the action figures before he came on the show, you know, it's a big deal. I know it's nothing to you, though, actually. Well, no, <laughs> for me, I, it's a I, big listen, deal. Listen, <laughs> Jimmy gave me, uh, for one of my, whatever, Christmas or birthday, a Howdy Doody puppet. And that means a lot to me because as a little boy, I watched the Howdy Doody show every day and I learned how to have manners and how to treat people because that's how they did shows back in my day. They taught children not to be mean, selfish, rude, conceited. And we learned from puppets. Imagine from a wooden, a, Flash Gordon a, a wooden doll. A wooden doll taught kids today how to behave.